Welcome to today's webinar, how to build flexible custom labeling interfaces with plugins. Uh, today, Michaela Kaplan, our uh, machine learning evangelist will be presenting. And uh, this is some really cool functionality that we have in Label Studio that I think it, uh, really extends the power of the platform. So I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Michaela and she can walk you through it. Thanks, Nate. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Nate mentioned, my name is Michaela Kaplan. I'm the ML evangelist here at Human Signal. Uh, and today we're going to talk about plugins, uh, which might have you might have heard it referred to as custom scripts. That's what it used to be called, uh, but now it's called plugins, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So, without further ado, if I can get my screen, so what are plugins? Uh, plugins are a way of extending the Label Studio Task UX uh, customization even further. So, when you build your UI uh, in traditional sense, you're limited to whatever you can do in the labeling config. Uh, but now you have the ability to write custom JavaScript code on top of your task. You can import external libraries, you can integrate with external services, uh, you can implement interactive actions and macro workflows, as well as apply custom compliance and governance policies. Uh, you can see in this little video screen, uh, this little video demo that's playing next to the text. Uh, here, uh, we're doing some name entity recognition task, and when we go ahead and select a word and give it a label, the macro that we've implemented using plugins automatically goes through and labels all of the other occurrences of that word with the correct label that you've assigned. Um, we, as someone with a linguistics background, I know that this might not always be exactly what you want. Uh, words can have different meanings in different contexts, things like that, but it's a really great starting point, especially if you're looking at things uh, like proper nouns. Um, and of course, because it's so extensible and because you can import from any library you want, you can use any external service you want as long as it's compatible with JavaScript. Uh, really, it's super flexible and the world is your oyster as far as what you can do. Uh, so, and you'll get these slides uh, after the presentation, so no need to worry about taking every note here or worrying about what's in the links. Um, the links are all links to documentation that explain this a little bit uh, more in depth. Um, but basically what you do is you write arbitrary JavaScript to be executed at the runtime of a task under the permission user context. So what this means is that every time you click into an annotation, be it in the label all tasks button or by using the data manager, uh, this JavaScript will be fired. Uh, the context that it gets is the current user, which means it will have all the same access and authorization permissions as the user who's doing the annotation. Um, and there are ways to access the task document object model via the document object. Uh, we link some documentation here, uh, as well as the task object itself, as well as the annotation state, uh, and do event composition using LSI, which is the Label Studio interface, and HTX star, which is uh, refers to Hartex, the old name of our company, objects. Uh, again, there's more documentation about the implementation details of this coming up. We're not going to walk through the actual JavaScript code in this much detail today. Um, but you can find all the documentation you need online. Um, so here's an example of what we just sort of showed before. Uh, so in this case, we're going to implement a macro to accelerate repetitive task functions. So we have listeners for events. In this case, we're listening, I believe, for uh, the annotation to happen. Uh, you can trigger event-based actions, including things like key up, key down, uh, submit, uh, mark as gold beyond truth, all kinds of things. Uh, and in this case, we're filtering through and iteratively modifying the regions. Now, a region is what we call each individual annotation. You can see here on the right-hand side of the video that it pops up under the regions tab. Every single annotation we make is a region. Uh, so here, we're going to go through and iteratively modify that regions list to include all of the uh, different occurrences of the word. Uh, and as I said before, we have a lot of examples of this that we'll go through today. Um, I wanted to take a minute to talk about some sort of general uh, patterns and practices that you should follow when developing uh, plugins. Uh, so you want to package your code into libraries of functions where they can be imported and used for any project. Uh, this is going to sound very similar to a lot of your other software engineering protocol. Um, you want to make sure that uh, your code is modular and reusable. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you make a new project that you want the same type of uh, oversight for. Uh, you can consider deploying your services as a Lambda, which is the how we do our Plotly example. Documentation is linked here. Um, and you want to make sure that you implement authorization by reusing the user's context from their web browser to the backend services. You don't want to have to have a user uh, retype new information uh, or add extra layers of confusion there. You're going to inherit all of those things from your user permissions as well. So if you take a look at this diagram on the left-hand side of the screen, 
uh, we can see the user access is tracked by the blue line. The internal data communication is tracked by the black line. We have our multi-tenancy users that connect to an authentication layer. Uh, the browser and API level is where you're going to want to implement your plugins repository, uh, where you want to store all your plugins so they're usable by all of your projects. Uh, we authenticate in. We have account-based access control uh, parameters. So that's your organizations in Lilo Studio Enterprise, as well as your role-based access control. From there, uh, internally, we communicate with the application server and our metadata storage using HTTPS. Uh, and the user, activity, the user access is going to go ahead and use URLs to get through any data storage that you might have linked there as well. Um, and as you can see, by implementing our plugins repository at the level that we do at the browser level, it's going to be accessible by everybody throughout the whole thing. Although I believe only certain levels can actually implement plugins. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, as far as the development workflow is concerned here, we have some suggestions. Uh, we recommend that you use the debugger, console logging, and your browser's development tools uh, to help sort of debug these issues. Uh, we also recommend that you use a full-featured IDE. I'm an IntelliJ kind of girl because I grew up, uh, started with Python, and Python uses PyCharm. Uh, but you could use VS Code, pick your poison, any full-featured IDE will work well for this task. Uh, we recommend that you use your full-featured IDE to develop your plugins. Uh, that interact with a mocked HTML. So you'll basically make a pretend uh, HTML interface. Uh, and then you can transpose that to Label Studio for testing. That will make sure that you're doing uh, as much debugging as carefully as possible and as uh, time efficient a way. Um, and as always, we want to make sure that we're practicing good object-oriented programming fundamentals, making our code modular, making it reusable, passing parameters appropriately. You want to make sure that you're programming defensively and that you're minding race conditions, especially because we're working in the browser at runtime. Race conditions here are going to be really important, uh, but they're all things that you can do right in your browser in the panel, uh, the code panel that I'll show you in a minute, or in your full featured IDE. Um, here are some resources that we have for you. I'll go over some of them today. And again, you'll get these documents linked to you, so don't worry about following all the links now. Um, but we have some overview of plugins and some examples from our label studio documentation, as well as a GitHub repository with more examples in it that you can definitely feel free to look at. Um, and we can we recommend that you consider creating a private repository where solutions and patterns can be shared within and among your teams. Again, this is just sort of generally good programming practice. We want to make sure that you're not uh, reinventing the wheel every time you want to do a similar task. Um, if you're, let's say you're trying to detect hate speech, which is, or disallowed words, which the example we'll go through in a minute, uh, you don't want to have to recode that every time you do a different iteration of your project. Um, so without further ado, it is time for a demo. Um, so the first thing I want to show you over here is our plugins gallery. Uh, this is available at docs.humansignal.com slash plugins um, right here in our enterprise documentation. Uh, and this is going to be a full repository of all of the examples that we've built for you. Um, I'll show you how to drag and drop these into your projects in a minute. Um, but as you can see, we have a whole variety of plugins to get you started. Uh, bulk labeling for text spans is the example that was in the video. Uh, spam and bot detection, we have a blog post going about, I believe, today, um, where you can sort of monitor how quickly annotators are submitting annotations. Uh, and if they're doing the same annotation over and over again in too short a period of time, it's likely to be spam. So you could detect for that. Uh, you could connect to an LLM backend. You could visualize data on the fly with Plotly. You can sync video frames. Um, really, the world is your oyster when it comes to this. Any sort of high-level customization you want to do above the level of your task is what you're going to look at here. Uh, so let's take a look at an example. We'll work through one together. So this is my Label Studio Enterprise uh, account. As you can see, we're in a new project called Content Moderation Plugin. I have one example task. And if we click into this task, what you can see is that we have some audio, and we're going to look for speech and noise. And if we go ahead and annotate a speech section here, uh, we're not going to listen to it. I believe it's uh, the Mario theme song, but I'm not going to listen to it right now. We can click on it, and you can see that we have a text box here that pops up where we could type in the transcription of whatever it is that we're doing. Um, and we're going to say, for argument's sake, then in this example, we're going to look to transcribe all of the words in the text, except we're not going to allow the word hate. Um, you can imagine how this pro would be extensible to other types of words uh, that you might not want in your transcription. So how do we do that? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we don't have this annotation anymore so that we can make sure that we see it clean when we look at it later. Uh, we're going to go into our settings, into our labeling interface, 
And we're going to click on this plugins button over here in the corner. Uh, as you can see, we're in that same preview window that we usually see when we go to build our annotation or labeling interface. And if we wanted to, we could come back to the code here or the visual annotator here, but this is where we implement plugins. Uh, in this big box here is where we're going to go ahead and type in all of our JavaScript code. Uh, and this works just like any other JavaScript code you've ever written. So if you want to import, if you want to do uh, whatever JavaScript you want to do, you'll execute it here. Uh, but I'm going to refer you to this insert plugin drop down menu here on the left hand side. Uh, and if we click on it, you can see that all of the examples from our plugins uh, gallery that we just looked at are available here for you. And if we go ahead and click on this simple content moderation example, it will automatically populate the JavaScript into our uh, code window here. Uh, importantly to note, this is stackable. So let's say we wanted to do text area word count alongside content moderation. We could click on them both and they would both run. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to get rid of all of this and reinsert the content moderation example. Uh, and you can see it's pretty well documented, um, but essentially we're looking for LSI on. This is how we look at for Label Studio Actions. This is going to be before save annotation. So when you click the submit button, this will run before it saves the annotation. Uh, we're looking for, we make this constant obscene. We look in our text area tag for any text that includes the word hate. Uh, you can imagine here that if you wanted to extend this list to other words, you could change out the word here. You could refactor the code so that it looked through a list. Um, all of your general programming options are available here to you. Uh, if it's not obscene or it's been dismissed, we'll return true. Otherwise, if it is obscene, uh, we're going to show a modal that says the word hate is disallowed. Um, and then we'll dismiss it. So we've put in this code. How do we make sure that it works? Uh, it turns out you can test your plugin right from the template builder, uh, which is really handy when you're trying to finish up that debugging step. So the first thing we're going to do is run the plugin uh, so that it activates. Now we're going to go ahead and in our preview window, make our annotation. So just the same way we did before, we're going to make speech. We're going to highlight it. You can see that the entity create has appeared in the event log. We're going to type hate and we're going to submit that. And now it's time to submit our fake annotation. How do we do that? There's no submit button. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here to this trigger an event button or drop down menu. We're going to select it. We're going to click submit annotation. As you can see, we can mimic a whole bunch of different uh, sort of annotation actions here. Update annotation, select annotation, delete annotation, set down truth, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click submit annotation and hit trigger. This is going to mimic our annotation submission in our uh, environment here. And as you can see, the before save annotation event has happened, and we see that the word hate is disallowed. Um, this looks good to me, so we're going to go ahead and save this here. And now if we go back to our data manager, remember that plugins run every time you select an annotation, every time you enter into a new task. So whether we click label all tasks, or in this case, we're going to click into this annotation here, the plugin is now automatically running uh, because we've saved it in our settings. So if we go ahead and we do the same thing here, we'll type in the word hate, we'll enter, we'll click submit, and the pop-up will appear. Uh, it's important to note, and I like to use this example to illustrate this point, uh, that the plugin is only triggered when you select the annotation. So if we were to clear this button, hit OK, uh, it'll bring us back to the annotation so that it can be edited. However, we have not re-triggered the plugin. What that means is if we're going to go ahead and just click submit without changing anything, the annotation will go through. Uh, if that's not your desired behavior, you're going to have to go ahead and change the code a little bit to fix that problem. Um, but that's plugins in a nutshell. Um, as you can see, it's a really great way to add sort of moderation uh, or quality control checks or other types of per task activities to your Label Studio Enterprise uh, tasks. Uh, again, for more, you can go ahead and click in this plugins gallery in each uh, sort of item here. Let's look at Plotly. You can see that we can see in about. We can see the plugin text or the, the code that you need, as well as a labeling config that will work uh, and some sample data so that you can go ahead and play around with these yourself. Uh, but I cannot emphasize enough that any JavaScript will work here. So if there's something else you want to do, by all means, go ahead and code for it yourself. We would love to hear what you come up with. Uh, for your uh, plugins. Uh, and that's it from me. Does anyone have any questions? I don't see anything in the Q&A or the webinar chat, but I would love to take questions about this or about other Label to Do Enterprise things if you have them.
I'll go ahead and wait a second uh, in the chat. Great. Uh, as always, you can reach out to us for help. This is an enterprise feature, so I'm going to assume that you're all enterprise uh, clients or prospective clients. Uh, so you can go ahead and reach out to your customer success manager uh, or our support team if you want to go ahead and enable plugins on your own account. Uh, thanks for joining, everyone. Nate, I don't know if you have anything else to add today. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Michaela. Uh, really appreciate you going through this. Um, like she mentioned, uh, this is an enterprise feature. Uh, so if you're not an enterprise customer, you know, we'll send a link after this with a recording of the webinar, as well as uh, a link to an enterprise free trial as well. Um, if this is a feature that you're interested in looking at, then um, definitely mention that to the person on our sales team that we chat with, uh, because we can get you enabled and you can try it out for yourself. So anyway, uh, thanks everybody for attending. Thanks so much, Michaela, for sharing this and I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, everyone.